best there is, the best there was, or the best there ever will be. You will rest in these. Best on the mic. Featuring your hosts, Darnell the Playmaker Celine, and from Sportsway, Dre Day. Best in the world. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Another episode of Best on the Mic. We are through the first half of the round of 32. This, we're going to preview the second half towards the end. We're going to review the first half when we get started, as always. So on Sportsway with Dre Day, my boy Dre Day, what's going on? Ain't nothing, man. Ain't nothing. Same shit, different toilet paper. You about to do this thing again. You want to go ahead and say your favorite line? Oh, sure. Why not? It's episode time, motherfuckers. There we go. Bear Man of Texas is on the podcast as usual. Alex, what's going on? Got a lot going on. Still trying to fight through these crazy times. And I think I speak for all of us when this episode will be dedicated to the memory of Kamala, who passed away earlier this week. Rest in peace. R.I.P. R.I.P. I mean, one of the guys they say that was, was super mistreated during his time in WWE, did everything he was told. He, he was a, he drew a lot of uh, drew a large crowd. It was never taken care of. Did they even do a tribute for him on Raw? Not that I know of. I mean, WWE t- they tweeted. I mean, I'm sure they tweeted something, but as far as a tribute goes, I, I really don't even know. <clears throat> to be honest, I don't even know. I ain't catch the beginning. Of, it's kind of hard to catch the beginning of Raw when you kind of watch NBA basketball. <laughs> Well, you know what? The the, the uh, what's better for Kamala is that the fans uh, we appreciate what he did. So as long as we respect him, that's that, that that's all that matters. I mean, if since WWE doesn't care about him, if they don't, then who cares? As long as the fans do, Kamala's gonna be better off. So may he rest in peace. By the way, Alice wrote a piece on Kamala on the website that y'all should go check out. Yes, and, and actually, I should I should mention Darnell that writing that piece, you know, from all the research I did, I I learned a, a few, I learned a lot of things about it. Like, I mean, that story with Andre the Giant. I mean, there was a video Bleacher Report did when, when they interviewed him a few years ago, and that story with Andre the Giant is actually pretty freaking scary. Y'all check that out on the website. We'll get into more of the website when we get ready to close this episode because there's more things to come on the website. But as like I said earlier, we're halfway through the round of 32. We got our first eight men superstars in the Sweet 16. So, shall we go in order like we usually do? Take it away, playmaker. All right. So you, so you know, Dre, I had, you know, I closed it hot, right? I closed the first round on a hot one. It's yeah, only it's- right for me to start off with a hot one. So the first matchup we came to was Chris Jericho versus Bobby the Brain Heaton. Dre, what you got for me? I mean, I knew the Brain was going to win. I just did I honestly was kind of pulling for Jericho to get more votes. I didn't think he would get washed the way he did. I would that that was the part that I was shocked with. I mean, I knew the late great Bobby the Brain was going to win. But the bias in me wanted Jericho to at least get more votes than what he got. I didn't think it would be a wipeout the way it was. So what is Dre talking about? The final tally was Bobby the Brain eating 33, Chris Jericho 24. Alice, what you think of Bobby going to the team? This is not cool at all. I mean, with the <laughs> in my in, in, in personal thoughts. There has never been a guy bet on on the mic than Chris Jericho. We all love to talk about The Rock. I mean, The Rock is special in his own way, and so is Chris Jericho. But Chris Jericho adds unique. Chris Jericho, literally, you could spend a whole entire day watching all these videos of him cutting promos. You just want to keep going. So for Chris Jericho to lose to Bobby the Brain Heenan, I can't even drink that in, Junior. (laughs) By the way, I know Dre saw some of the comments, but... (laughs) Throughout this first out, well, people were kind of upset at us because they had to make some choices. Yeah. Like, what was it? What, 
one of the I think the I think the latest one that we posted, one of my mans was like, is this is this is this even a question? I'm like, yeah, it's a question. Just answer the shit. Like, don't make it difficult. Just answer the question. I think I think it was I think it was Flair Foley. He was like, oh, is this a question? What does it look like? Yeah, it's a question. Just answer the shit. We we warned y'all. When round two get here, y'all gonna have to make some choices. Y'all thought we were playing. We weren't playing when we made this tournament. Speaking of which, we're gonna go to the second matchup of round two. Alex, we had Mr. Perfect Kurt Heaney against Jake the Snake Roberts. What you got? Well, Jake the Snake Roberts, again, is very unique. But the the promos he has, it's been a while, and I go back and watching them, but it's just, the, those promos he cut with when he had that feud with Macho Man Randy Savage. It's one of those rivalries that old school wrestling fans can't stop talking about because I, I you know, as you guys know, I I do some Uber rides, and believe it or not, I've had diehard wrestling fans from those eras, and you know, I would inter- I would tell them about the page, and you know. And as luck would have it, they would pull out their phone and go on the Facebook page, and I would hope that they cast a vote, but they would talk to me about it. And I said, well, for me, it's hard to be sure because, you know, these guys are before my time. And talking realistically, when these are guys before your time, it's hard for you to make that simple choice because I can go back and watch these videos, but these wrestling fans say you have to experience it when the time happened to have the true experience. And as far as Kurt Henning goes, the promos I remember him best was from his time at WCW when he was part of the NWO. I do understand he was one of the, he's one of the, he's definitely in the top ten as far as big heels go in uh in history of wrestling. There was that feud he had in early in the early nineties when he was the Intercontinental Champion, the feud he had with Bret the Hitman, Hitman Hart. Mm-hmm. And if I remember correctly, he had that promo saying, you know, Hart is overrated. He says, heart may be a heart, but I'm Mr. Perfect, and I'm going to prove it to you guys. So it's typical heel talk, but Mr. Perfect did it in a special sense. Like, some of these wrestlers, I mean, they're big heels for a reason. They make their promo scene super genuine, and that's what I like it. It's just a shame for me that, you know, I wasn't around during, during that time because it would have been special. I mean, you, you guys know me. I mean, I, I mean, I started when the Attitude Era was, uh, was around, and I do miss that. No, we all. Who does? So, uh, Jake Jim Cornette Robert. doesn't. <laughs> Jake the Snake Robert. <laughs> we know. We gonna get into Jim Cornette. My, we gonna get into Jim Cornette in a couple of matches. Anyway, Mr. Snake Roberts took took this one twenty three to eleven over Mr. Perfect. Apparently, Mr. Perfect ain't all perfect, though, Dre. Nope, not at all. R.I.P. though. R.I.P. Kurt Henning, no doubt. R.I.P. But before we move on, uh, Alex, have you been catching AEW lately? In a sense, um, from what I know is Maxwell Jacob Friedman started this uh, angle where you, if you go on his on his Twitter, he, he puts this hashtag on the bio, uh, not my champion, MJF 2020. And, and, I, and I did see that, um, that promo he cut when he was kind of giving like, you know, like a speech address, you know, like a presidential candidate. And he's, he ultimately, he's challenging John Moxley for the AEW title. So that's basically what I'm following, following right now. And I do know, uh, obviously, Cody's doing that uh, week by week uh, open challenge for the TNT title. But what really has my eyes right now on AEW is MJF challenging John Moxley. Well, I was, I brought that up because Jake the Snake Roberts was on TV. Several legends are on TV. I know Arn Arn Anderson is, I, I believe, managing Cody. Is he not? You can you can call it that because Jake Jake Roberts is ma- is managing um what's my man name Lance Archer. And then, and then Taz is managing uh, the other guy, the big guy. What's his name? You talking about uh? I can't think of his name right now. Yeah, come back. Uh, it's yeah, we'll come back. I mean, I know the fans listening; they know who I'm. T- they know who I'm talking about, and it's, it's always great. It's always great to see Taz because Taz's Brooklyn, New York accent is just so cool. Uh, match three of round two, my man Dre. 
You wanted him just to get out the first round, and you would be satisfied. He got out the first round. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. We came, we came in the round two. He had you thinking a bit because it was Booker T versus Jerry the King and Lola. Uh huh. So <laughs> it had a lot of people thinking, according to these numbers here. I gotta admit, I gotta admit, King Bucka took it by a vote of. 19 to 15. How you feeling, Dre? Sweet 16. Here we come. Sweet 16. Here we come. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with it. I was nervous about this one, though. I I, I, I was nervous about it. Again, like I said, I said, as long as my man can get down, I'm good. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't expect him to get to the Sweet 16, but being that he's about to, let's go. <laughs> Everybody Alex. else is welcome. Let's see what happens in the Sweet 16. Let's Alex, see what you, dance with. What do you think of King Booker taking the crown from Jerry to King Lawler? <laughs> well, I can't say I'm surprised because Booker T is super popular. And everybody's everybody's still talking about the promo that you know Dre mentioned you know before. The promo where he called out Hogan. And, and you guys know what I'm talking about. He's going to go that, play. <laughs> that, the first thing, when it comes to promos in the category of Booker T... That promo just comes to mind in the in the snap of a finger. But a couple uh, when he did that promo last year, when when the New Day became five time tag team champions, and when he came out as King Booker and had that ang- and that did that story with with them, if you guys remember it, yes, I remember. Yes, that was pure magic. It shows that Booker T has still got it. Go ahead, Dre, play it. I know you want to play it. <laughs> Never gets old. Never gets old. I, listen, if, if there was a way that when the tournament continues and we could take a favorite, a favorite promo from them and match it up with the opponent that they're going up against and their favorite promo, I don't know. Booker T might. I don't know. Booker T might go real far in this thing with just that promo alone. I don't know. Man, that's something to think about. I mean, it's kind of having me thinking when he was t- when he was paired up with Goldust. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No pun intended. But he had some golden moments over there. Him or Goldust? Well, you know, Goldust is one of the most underrated performers in the history of professional wrestling. He's underrated. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah period. He's underrated. Shout out to Gold as Dustin Rose. Like, like, like what you were saying about Kamala, about doing what they asked you to do, Gold was doing the same shit. He did what they asked him to do. He did it to the best of his ability. Definitely a Hall of Famer when his career is over, no doubt. Shout out See, to Gold Dust. And Gold Dust and Kamala have something very special in common. The characters that they performed under were gold. They, they attracted a large crowd. It made money. It did. The crowd loved those characters. I mean, come on. I mean, they actually. I mean, I thought this was exaggerated, boys, but it's actually been proven to be true. Kids were scared of Kamala because his entrance. He would come out, you know, with that tribal music, had that spear and that mask, and kind of acting like you know the way he did. Kids were actually scared of him. But I think when it comes to Goldust, kids were probably confused. Like, wait, what is he? Is he like an actor? I mean. I mean, an actor is not really the way to describe... I mean, that's a way to describe Goldust's character, but it's more than that. Moving on <laughs> to match four. I mean, whew. Um, we call this our first beatdown of the round, because it was DDP versus Jim Carnett and uh, Alex. Oh. <laughs> Did not go well for Mr. Yoga Man himself. Good gracious. And as soon as I say that... Thunder comes into play. Look, what I'm going to say about Jim Cornette is 
when it comes to him talking, it's more of the things he said in interviews and shoots and whatnot than he's actually said in the in, in the ring. Because, okay, because I wanted to know for the longest time why Jim Cornette had uh, has like a long beef with Vince Russo. I mean, the easiest way to explain it is the, is the fact that. They both see wrestling different. Jim Cornette's the old school guy, while you know Vince Russo, you know, wanted to modernize wrestling because the world the world was changing. And another way is, you know, Vince Russo is probably the guy, kind of guy he doesn't care if you call wrestling fake. But if you say if you call wrestling fake in front of Jim Cornette, Jim Cornette's gonna well, he's he's really gonna have some harsh words for you. So Jim <laughs> Cornette, yes, Jim Cornette took it sixteen and six over DDP, like. Mr. Mister Make Me Friends only got six votes out of that. And kind of surprised on that part. I think the reason why he won, to be honest, is because of all the controversial stuff that Jim Cornette says. Like, people actually like it when he does that. I love it. I love it. I mean, he said on, on Dark Side of the Ring, in, in the closing moments of the episode of the Montreal Screwjob, I mean, he said it many times. He, he vows that he's going to piss on Vince Russo's grave. And the way his, I mean, the facial reactions on his face when he says that, you can tell that he's actually laughing at the same time because he, he, <laughs> there's nothing. Oh. I mean, to say that he hates Vince Russo, I mean, that's not even enough. I mean, I mean it, it's he, there's no way to explain it. He, he, there's no Christmas greeting between the two. There never will be. Jim Cornette don't even like AEW. <laughs> Except, I mean, and he's known for criticizing. Like he criticized J- uh, Kevin Owens' uh, his appearance and uh, apparently his weight. I'm like. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, who cares about you know Kevin uh, Owens' physical appearance? Kevin Owens is very great. Is very good in the ring, very skilled. So it doesn't bother me. And honestly, I don't know why it bothers him. Yeah, Jim Cornette played that man. Though. I mean, he also had something to say about uh, uh what's his uh, the dude with Jungle Boy, uh, Marco Stunt. All right. So that's 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 the your first four that was in. Heyman over Jericho, Snake over Mr. Perfect, Booker T over Jerry Lawler, Jim Cornette over DDP. Now, as we move on, all right, here we go. Dre, you. this might take some time because you, me, and a whole lot of other people didn't see this one coming. The Mad Dog Man Ted DiBiase went up against Ravishing Rick Rude. Do we call this an upset? Mm, I don't know if I'll consider it an upset. The reason why I say this, mm. ladies and gentlemen, because by a vote of 15 to 10, the million dollar man is going to the sweet 16. Talk to the people, Dre. What's the famous saying by Ted DiBiase? Everyone's got a price. Everyone's got a price for the million dollar man. That's basically that's basically it. <laughs> that's that's basically it. Again, I mean, I mean, Alex, like, I mean, I can agree with you, like, the whole not being not growing up in that era. There's only so much. There's only so much I can actually speak on as it pertains to Ted DiBiase. You know, obviously, there's some promos that I can remember off the top of my head. And one of them happening to be, um, I believe he had a kid dribble a basketball. And I guess when he got down to, I guess, the last dribble, he messed up the dribble for the boy. He lost out on some money. Real real top shelf hill shit right there from Ted DiBiase, no doubt. Exactly. And the moment he was on the, uh, on the Brother Love show, when he introduced the Million Dollar Championship, that was pretty cool. Well, I should say that is pretty cool because, you know, like I said, I didn't watch it, so I can't exactly use the words. That was pretty cool. Uh, but it was also the uh, the vignette. I mean, the vignettes that, that they launched uh, when they were right before the character had his uh, – right before Teddy Viasi actually debuted the character, they had a series of vignettes where uh, he bribes the manager of a restaurant to give him a seat without having to wait in line. He like you know pays his way through an emergency room or what whatnot. I mean he's he was demonstrating the everybody's got a price power. So even though that's not exactly a promo, it's still the way he spoke, the way the character was, the way he he made it look magic. It was it was breathtaking. 
But we have ever seen Rick Rude, the man who puts your who puts your wife on his trunks. I mean, like I've said before, possibly the second biggest heel of all time loses to probably at best maybe the seventh best heel of all time. Tell you, he, he would tell the crowd to set your fat, greasy faces up so I could give the ladies what they came for. Mm. This is the man who lost to the million dollar man. It's actually the first, we have some, we have some actual, I got, Dre, I'm you know, some low back in the first round, but when we posted the results, <laughs> oh, there was some blowback for real. <laughs> For this match, for that matchup right there, yes, people were stunned that Million Dollar Man took out Ravishing Rick Rude. Oh, that's 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 the beauty of this format. It's like March Madness. Anything can happen. Any anything can happen. Anything can happen. You think somebody? You you think it's a guaranteed victory for somebody? What? Upset alerts. It happens. It happens. So if people want to call this an upset, all right, cool. So be it. And speaking right. of upsets, I mean, this thing, you know, this whole uh, tournament is like March Madness, but it's also like this year's edition of the Champions League. Upsets and upsets and upsets. Like I said, that was going to take some time because we did not we did not see Ravish and Rick Rue getting ousted in the second round. That's for sure. <laughs> but moving on. <laughs> We we got to Ed versus Paul Heyman. Mm. And Alex Ed did not have a shot whatsoever in this in this contest. I'm sorry, but I gotta say it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman beat the radio superstar. Very 19, well 19 of three. Look, Very I gotta, well I gotta, I gotta ask you this, guys. When you hear when Paul Heyman starts his promo by introducing himself the way he does, doesn't that catch you? Catch, like, doesn't like affect you in some way? Like, it really makes you feel like he's about to blow the roof off the building with what he's about to say. Like, you know that you're about to be in for a treat. No, oh, I say it with him. So I do I. I say it with him every time. Even though I don't like Brock Lesnar, but I but I I I I, I go along and I say it with him. I mean, I love. I, like, 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 I, I, I do like, too, like, but the truth is, I can't help it. I mean, it's just it take it takes control of you. Like Paul Heyman really reels you in. Like he takes you on a ride. I mean, <laughs> Paul Heyman has been known for. He, when he was the head writer of SmackDown, you could tell the cool stuff he was putting on is he does care about the fans, so he wants to interact with the fans somehow. Even though he's a heel, he's committed to giving the fans his best. And that's why I will always have great respect for him. But let me ask you this, Dre. Yo. Because I, I believe we all kind of knew Paul Heyman was going to win. Absolutely. But did we expect Ed to get this little amount of votes, though? Mm. He only got three votes. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. He only got three. Yeah. I mean, that's not rated R. That's rated G. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'd have been satisfied with about five or six, but again, it's Paul Heyman. He going up against, so that's why he only got three. He only had three votes, and it's like, wow, dang, that's all. That's all my man, the radio superstar can get. So, hey, Paul Heyman, you got it over. And then we get to the biggest blowout so far. <laughs> and I must say, we all saw this coming. The Steeros, the American Dream against mm. Bubba slash Billy Way Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> this was a... Thank you for the thunder. Because this was a beatdown. Because <laughs> the American Dream took it. 50... 69 to the 7. It was done. Dare I say, Darnell, that we can honestly think of this matter, imagine it in an illusion that Bubba Ray Dudley was 
power bomb through a flaming table, ECW style. Mm. Actually, no, let me take it up a notch, fellas. He was power bomb through a flaming table, but he was power bomb off a balcony. <laughs> that's the, that, that that's the way I, I envisioned this result. Um, what was the score? What, what what was the score again for that one? Yeah, like sixty nine to see like hold on, let me look at it again. God damn. Sixty six to seven. Damn. Yeah, he was put through a table all right. I ain't even thinking it'd be that many votes. God damn. Man, they lined up and it was all American Dream all day, every day. Now, no, no. Listen, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he makes it to the finals. People don't like bullies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they showing it. Well, for me, you know, I, I was n- never in a TNA. Uh, I remember, uh, you guys remember that promo he did when the Deadly Boys were supposedly about to join the right to censor? Do you guys remember that? Nah, nah, I can't, I can't remember it off the top of my head, nah. Basically, the, the Dudley boys were in the ring with Right to Censor, and Bubba Ray Dudley is basically saying the Dudley boys finally realize that violence is wrong, and then he and then he says, and what about the tables, you ask? And he, then he literally, he changes his voice, and he, he goes, if putting through t- people through tables is wrong, then I don't want to be right, and then... They attack right to censor, and then they power bomb Stevie Richards onto the table. Mm. And that was pretty cool. I mean, I, I mean, for me, you know, I hated the right to censor, so it was, it was really a laughing matter. And I was seven years old when this took place. I, I loved seeing the leader of right to censor being being put through a table. <laughs> man, 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 man. Stevie Richards. I, I still don't know he got that one vote. But go ahead. <laughs> Called, I mean, it's like I said, the, there were there were sympathizers of the right to censor. Well, I'm not going over that again. <laughs> yeah, he got one vote over the rock. One. <laughs> I don't know how he got that vote. Go ahead. All right. Which one of y'all want to go first? Because you know it's we down to the final match, and you know who it was. Mm. Take it away, Dre. You got this, brother. Woo! Rick Flair versus Mick Foley was the final one of the first half of the round of 32. And well, Foley did get two votes. Oh. <laughs> he, he did. Oh. <laughs> he, get, he, he got two. He got two. That's not a bad number. That's G to O number. So that's not bad. Okay. He got two votes. The problem is that goddamn Rick Flair got 26 of them. <laughs> Oh boy! Why, why being low blow by Randy Orton on Monday Night Raw? It's like you said in that tweet, Darnell. If they're gonna portray him as a legend killer, they have to make it as realistic as possible. And Darnell, you are absolutely right. I mean, honestly, it's been a long time since they refer to him as a legend killer because for the for the longest time he's been known as the Apex Predator. And I don't, and I don't know about you, gentlemen. But I prefer Legend Killer. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, Randy Orton still looks fresh. Like, he still looks like he's got a long way to go. I mean, as long as he stays healthy. I mean, Orton looks better. I mean, I can honestly say he looks better than ever. Still great on the mic. Still great in the ring. I'm actually pulling for him to beat Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. I'm actually, I, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually pulling for him. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I would have loved to see Drew McIntyre have a long, long title run, but... If he's going up against RKO, I definitely don't want him winning. As long as Brock Lesnar is not the champion, then I don't care. Preach, <laughs> preach, preach, my brother, preach. You know what? You know what? For a special segment, we're going to come back to SummerSlam. Because that's some things we might need to talk about. Anyway, back to the Rolex ring. Jet flying, limousine riding. Son of a gun, Ric Flair here. 16-time champion. Oh, no, 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 no. His... His, his his new name his new his new thing is Charlotte Flair's dad. Oh yeah, that's true. Yes, yes, that, he's that, Charlotte that, that's Flair's new, dad. New. That's who he is right now. Charlotte Flair's dad. <clears throat> he don't even care about it either. It's he, not even oh Ric Flair's daughter like Ric Flair's um daughter anymore. It's now Charlotte. He he wants to go by Charlotte Flair's dad. 
Nature Boy, along with the American Dream, Paul Heyman, the Million Dollar Man, all in a sweet 16. That's our eight. That means we got eight more to go. So, fellas, you know how we do. We pre- we take some looks at the upcoming matchup. By the way, guess what? This time, I already had the matchup to set this time. So, coming out the gate. Oh, yes, I'm coming out the gate strong. I looked at this hard. I'm going to put these people on the spot again, Dre. You know why? Why? Because I'm doing a WrestleMania 22 rematch. I know where this is going. Against John Cena. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. I can't wait. I, I can't wait for that one. I can't I can't wait for that one to get posted. Yeah, yeah, y- y'all that's listening, y'all, we, y'all might want to write this down because I'm, t- I'm gonna be gonna tell y'all again. Round two, we ain't playing. We said it last time. Once we get to round two and on four. Ain't no cake rolls. <laughs> so coming out the gate on Monday, Triple H John Cena out the gate. Mm. Well, I've got something to say about this match, fellas. Go ahead. And first thing I'm going to say, I'm going to quote Paul Heyman on this. This is not a prediction. This is a spoiler. Uh-oh. Triple H is not only going to win. Mm. But he is going to destroy John Cena because when it comes to Triple H and all the promos, there's the heel attitude era Triple H, there's the face DX Triple H, there's the, you know, the heel DX Triple H, there's everything and it's all combined together. So that's why John Cena does not stand a chance. Mm. Mm. Everyone else, keep this in mind. It's not a prediction. And you two folks who's listening, this is a spoiler. Y'all write that down. Hold my boy Alex accountable for what he just said. He said all this and knowing John Cena is the doctor of thugonomics, Dre. I mean, that's what Um, he was when I was a kid, so that's what I remember. That's why I remember the best about him. I'm, and you know what? I'm, Let me remind you folks about something. Since I just kind of quoted Paul Heyman on a defeat of John Cena, you guys remember when John Cena made Paul Heyman eat soap on SmackDown in 2004? Well, I don't even think I was watching at that time. <laughs> well, you should you should look it up. I mean, that's actually that's an angle that's going to make you laugh really hard. Wow. All right, y'all heard y'all heard Alex Triple H landslide with John Cena. It's not close. Remember that. Oh, not close. That's what he said. Says a spoiler, folks. It's a spoiler. He says, all right. Dre? Mm. So you got your one matchup that you wanted out the way. Your second matchup is the one is coming on Wednesday. Hulk Hogan versus Veritine Dream. Woo! I mean, Velveteen isn't is this some um, hot water right now with WWE right now, but as far as his promo skills, he going up against you know, the the H the guy, but um, I'm pulling for Valentine, I'm not even going to lie, I'm, pull, I'm pulling for him. I don't, I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't think he's going to get the dub. I think Hogan will wind up winning, but I'm pulling for him, though. I'm, pull, I'm, I'm pulling for an upset on this one. I mean, Christian had a fighting chance, so why can't Velvet Dream but why can't Velveteen Dream have one? That's what I say. You're all absolutely right. right. You're I'm absolutely a, right. I'm going to make up here because for all my old wrestling fans here, because I know there's a lot of y'all on, tw- on Twitter and Facebook, please go watch some videos of Velveteen Dream doing promos. Please. You will not be disappointed. That's my long Stephen A moment right here. You would not be disappointed. Let's go back and look at some Fabertine Dream videos. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. I promise you. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And this. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to call this one this, this third matchup that's going to be on Friday a blowout. It's Senior Punk versus Terry Funk. Oh, my God. So we got Hardcore versus Pipe Bomb Straight Edge. 
That's interesting. I think it's the approaching a bar. <laughs> well, once again, I'm going to pull the Paul here. Uh, the same thing with the Triple H match. This is not a prediction. This is a spoiler. CM Punk wins in a landslide. We all saying the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, it's the lot like the like say, like I said in the last episode, fellas. In my case, when it comes to Terry Funk, the only promo I mean, this is I mean, this was before my time. This was in '89 when he had that big feud with Ric Flair. That promos he cut, you know, that was leading up to that huge like I think it was an I Quit match. Uh, Chris Rex was ta- I think I was talking to Chris Rex about it, and that's a match we were, we're both uh, hoping to plan to go watch. That's what I. That's what I know about Terry Funk's promos because when it comes to Terry Funk, people know more about the all the famous violent matches he had. It's just the way he said on the mic. People talk more about like I mean I've never really heard o- old school fans talk about the things that Terry Funk has said on the mic. They talk more about the matches, all the weapons, you know, he's all the cool you know stunts he's done in those violent matches. I mean, that's what? Terry Funk. He's hardcore. You know what, Dre? This is what this is what we gonna do about this. So. The first round, CM Punk had the most votes out of everybody, right? Yes. All right. Dusty Rose set the bar for the second round at 66. CM Punk get more than that. Say it again. The CM Punk over or under 66 votes for CM Punk. Over or under? Yeah. I'll say under. All right. He says under. I'll say under. All right. Cool. Right. Alex? Alex, this part this might be the most interesting match of them, of them all because let me, it, let me it have will, it. It will be Vincent Kennedy McMahon against the Dead Man, The Undertaker. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! We got the Dead Man versus the evil corporate boss. Well, first of all. What's on my mind is is the buried alive the bury excuse me the buried alive match from Survivor Series in 2003 and if you guys recall if you guys were watching at the time Kane buried the Undertaker alive and that's when the Undertaker's bad bad uh the American badass character would kind of died uh, excuse me that's when it died and then he would come back uh, months later you know back as the dead man. So that's pretty ironic that the Undertaker is squaring off with Mr. McMahon. Well, mm-hmm. this is going to be really tough because we all know, first of all, when it comes to Vince McMahon, there's two of them. There's Vince, the businessman who runs the company, and then there's the on-screen character, the evil Mr. McMahon. Yes. So obviously people are going to see this as mis- as the Mr. McMahon character. But in the case, uh, if we're now... When it comes to the Undertaker, it, it's the same thing with Triple H. They're gonna they're gonna combine the American badass, the mortician, you know, the grave, you know, every every kind of different Undertaker character that he had as the Dead Man. They were all different in, in a sense. He, he was also when he had the the Ministry of Darkness. They're gonna put them all in. That's why the Undertaker has the huge advantage. So that's why the Undertaker wins. So Vince McMahon, in a sense, is gonna get tombstoned. Well, man, if well, if we're, if we're talking about all the characters combined, he's probably gonna get the last right as well. <laughs> all right. Our next uh, matchup after that, R.I.P. to both guys. Dre, Roddy Roddy Piper, Eddie Guerrero. Oh, uh, Dang. Either way, Dang. my heart's gonna be broken, guys, on this one. Either way, my heart's gonna be broken. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to go. Like, okay. All right. I've said this before, and and any well-known, any wrestler, wrestling fan that's educated or knows so much about the history like me knows, we always agree Roddy Piper is the biggest heel of all time. And Piper, not only was the promos wild, but the, the things he did, like he had Piper's pit. I think the everybody always thinks of, of when it comes to Roddy Piper's promos, Piper's pit always comes to mind. So that gives Rowdy an advantage. But Eddie Guerrero also has an advantage because Eddie Guerrero was not only funny on his promos, but also the stuff he did, like when he stole uh, Kurt Angle's Olympic gold medals. <laughs> Damn, how many, uh, times, how many times Kurt Angle's medals got stolen? 
Well, by the by the Guerreros, oh, at least three times. You gotta add Austin in now. No, oh, oh, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> you know that you reminded me. I'm gonna be laughing about this all night. You know Wait, what? Jerry, <laughs> that was a nice story I just did. Cause you know what the next matchup involves? It involves that man stole Cone Steve Austin. Go. I have one problem though, Dre. I have one problem. What's the problem? His opponent happens to be the man who can turn into the fiend in Bray Wyatt. Mm. Mm. So you talking about combining? We got the fiend, the Edo Worlds, Bray Wyatt himself against the toughest SOB to ever do it. Right. Well, I got my man, I got, I got my man Austin. He's gonna pull it off. Well, before I get into that, let me, I I should probably finish on uh, Latino Heat. But when before Latino before Eddie won the title from Brock Lesnar, Eddie, Eddie cut a couple of emotional promos and this based on legitimate problems that he had. You know when he was making his comeback into wrestling, based on his you know addiction with drugs, with alcohol, and you know how he had the marital problems. Mm-hmm. When, Eddie, when, when Eddie really cut those promos, I mean, he he made fans emotional. So that told me that I there is no way that Vince is gonna Vince is gonna have him lose to Lesnar. If Vince had him go out and cut those kinds of promos, that means Ed, Ed, Eddie's finally gonna get what he's worked so hard for, and the fans are gonna be so happy. And Eddie and when Eddie Guerrero turned heel in two thousand five, even though it was it was brief, that. That angle with Dominic, who, by the way, speaking of Dominic, he is all grown up now, and now he's going to fight Seth Rollins. <laughs> like I said, we're going to get into that before we get up out of here. And I'm talking, and now I'm talking, and I'm talking about Dominic, who was in an angle, I don't, I'm not sure how old he was at the time, he must have been probably around, maybe around was, 10 years, 10 years old 10. or something like that. It was 10. He was in an angle where Eddie Guerrero was his biological father. And that Eddie Guerrero had, had like revealed that secret in that book, you know, and, it, and that's when Eddie introduced the shirt, "I'm your poppy," a, a shirt that actually I want to buy really bad, but I just never have, I never get around to it. One of my bros actually bought one recently. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna find one. I'm gonna buy one. But uh, Eddie Guerrero, if Eddie Guerrero does somehow pull off the upset, I mean, I love Rowdy, but I watched. I mean, like I said, I've I've seen all the promos what Rowdy does on YouTube, and I've seen a couple of them when he did those sporadic appearances and did a uh, Piper's Pit. Uh, I mean, there was one time when Monday Night Raw was in Dallas, and and I was so blessed that Rowdy was there, and they had him do a Piper's Pit with Chris Jericho, which I absolutely loved. But Eddie has more than a fighting chance because I because Eddie and Piper are in the hearts of so many wrestlers. But this is going to be a battle between modern wrestling versus the old school wrestling. So. That, so this match is, special, is, is unique. But now that I'm done with that, I'm going to get to Bray Wyatt versus the toughest SOB in history. Well, first I'm going to go with Stone Cold because Stone Cold and I were not only fellow Texans, but we we both went to the same we both have the same alma mater. I'm proud of that. And nice. now when it comes to Stone Cold, the first thing you introduce, uh, well, when anybody cuts a promo, what is it? Okay, when anybody cuts a promo nowadays. What does the crowd usually chant? What? Exactly. What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> oh, and I think I think that was introduced after the Ali- uh, after the alliance went down. I think it was in the Monday Night Raw in two thousand one. Oh. When, when William Regal, this I think was, it, it was in that before the alliance there. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. You're, okay. You're right. I, I think it was then. That's when it, that's when the fans were like really starting like getting into it bigger. I mean, I'm 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 not sure. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll Stone never, Cold has done so much; it's hard to remember everything he's done. First time he got to speak after he joined the alliance, and he said, he said, I forgot what I think he said. If you want to see Stone Cold Steve Austin get his ass whooped, give me a hell yeah. Everybody say hell yeah. You go, what? Hell yeah, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> see, see, you a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> I mean, the promos he he would cut uh when he was feuding with the uh, but that's this is when the Rock was still a heel when the Rock was the top of the was the head of the was the heel of the corporation when they were feeding over the championship that reminds me of that of that angle on that bridge when uh 
Well, Stone, Stone Cold uh, p- uh, pops up in the trunk. They fight, and then, but then The Rock throws him out, throws him off. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oof. Very oh. right on that other side, dude. That guy there. Ugh. Every, Bro, every time yeah. I see Bray Wyatt, all I hear is run. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be interesting, though. It's, it's gonna be interesting. Another interesting one. All right, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Samoa Joe. Ooh, woo. Darnell, this is another situation with the fans where our our followers, they're going to ask us, is this even a question? <laughs> and but I'm, I'm, I'm like going to like, 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 say this again. If you have not paid attention to Samoa Joe, go watch some, go watch some YouTube videos on Samoa Joe. Well, and not only that, but you've said this numerous times, round two would get crazy, didn't you? Nice. <laughs> I mean, Lord knows how many times you said it, but some fans are just not, apparently they're not taking your word for it. Well, folks... You better take you better take Darnell's word for it now because the ride only intensifies. <laughs> I mean, based on this experience, I mean, I don't know how you haven't gotten that yet, but Samoa Joe versus Macho Man. Well, I mean, I said this earlier. TNA was never really my strong suit. I never really I watched a little bit of it, maybe in, in like from 2005 2007 when Kurt Angle, AJ Styles. When those guys were like, you know, AJ Styles was still a young guy. Yeah, Samoa Joe was there too. Samoa, Samoa Joe was there too. Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, they go back so long. I mean, they both, I think they were both at Ring of Honor together. I mean, these two, these two dudes have been together, have been, have been wrestling together for so, for so long. So I think anywhere that Samoa Joe has been, AJ Styles, AJ Styles had to have been there with him at, for some time. But Samoa Joe's promos in TNA, I don't, I, if there's one that I do remember, there was, when he, when he feuded with Kurt Angle, when, when he had that undefeated streak, that's something I have to go back and see, but I remember when I was watching it in 2005, 2006, I liked it. So, Dude, and, I, and, and I had noticed that instead of so, saying it's true, Kurt Angle was actually saying it's real. I'm a bad figure, well, that's because, you know, WWE probably owns the trademark on the whole it's true yeah. thingy, so. Dude, <laughs> like, I don't know, Dre, have you been, have you paid attention to TNA when some more was there? Never, I never paid attention to TNA. And it's so, not even TNA anymore. So, so imagine Samoa Joe, how he cut promos in WWE now, right? Or mm-hmm. how he talked on commentary. He was doing that in TNA. I believe it. I believe it. I've been heard stories about Samoa Joe. It's just that I couldn't I could I not get with TNA. I couldn't I couldn't get with TNA. But a lot but a lot of my but a lot of my dudes that you know I know when Samoa Joe first came to WWE, they was always telling me, they was like, yo. Yo, go check out his shit in TNA, yo. Go check it out in TNA. He was the truth there. He was the truth there. I know a lot of y'all might be picking Randy Savage, but go, go, go look at some, some more, Joe. Not only in WWE, but in TNA. That man, that man got some promo skills. It's, it, you know how bad it is, Dre? He tell you in poetry what he gonna do to you. You what? When he cut his promos on you, it's a it's in poetry. <laughs> he well, rhyming with it. I'm like, well, I can only go off the WWE ones. I know he did one with Jeff Hardy that was straight savage. I know he did one backstage with Dean Ambrose that was savage. He even did it while his wife was even doing the interview, which was hilarious to me. Yes, 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 yes. So all Joe's the truth. He's the truth on the mic. And now he didn't transcend to being a commentator, which he's doing an amazing job at that as well. So, yeah, this is this is this is not this is not going to be as easy as people think it is. And then we're going to finish off and have the Sweet Sixteen set with The Rock, the People's Champ versus the Body, Jesse Ventura. Mm. I'm biased. It's The Rock for me. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no, no. I, I, I feel the, I feel the same way, Darnell. I mean, I'm. I mean. <laughs> I, I never. I it's another situation. I never watched Jesse Ventura ever. Like the only things I've seen him here was all these. Is, is that like there's an interview he does like how he explains how Hulk Hogan ratted him out and ruined his career. But that's all I know about Ventura and the fact that he there's no one in the world that hates Hogan more than him. Okay, now I, I okay. I'm sorry, but every time I think about The Rock, I mean all the all these promos that come to mind. There's one that came to my mind and I have to let it out. One, two. 
It doesn't matter if The Rock counts to three. Speaking of that, I actually showed I this with you. I, I, I remember that one. I don't think I, who, he was the special guest referee. And I forgot what match it was. It was Triple H versus the British Bulldog. Ooh, oh, that was long ago. Oh, my God. That promo was funny. And then after that, he took, like, he, I think he, he did that. Uh, uh, you see, I, I spoke to Dre about this uh, recently, and he did that sliding uh, people's elbow. Yes, yes. But that's not what makes it so special, guys. What's so unique about the whole thing is that The Rock's glasses never moved. They never fell. They, they stood perfectly still. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> I already, ta- I already tagged y'all in my favorite promo from The Rock. Well, yeah, you, you, not- you, you did. And I actually commented on another promo. I don't know if you saw it. The promo he has oh, on, on his five hell in a cell. Pro- I didn't even have to watch that. I know that promo. That's the promo that he, he cut on Triple H, Kurt Angle, Stone Cold, Rakishi, and The Undertaker. And it was hilarious. I mean, <laughs> the, the Triple H, how he just makes fun of him. <laughs> Of course, he does the usual. He insults he he insults Stephanie, but you know that's the Rock. You know, especially with the, the feud between those two, the Rock always has to go off on Stephanie. I mean, I mean the crowd liked it, so who cares? But basically, <laughs> but what he mean? did with Lillian Garcia, <laughs> and she got a kick out of it too. She enjoyed it. <laughs> I was like, this man is gold. <laughs> I mean, if the Rock cuts a promo on you, even if it's humiliating. It's something that's going to, it's really going to have a positive effect on you. I mean, The Rock cut a promo on me. That's cool. Man, he had, he had Lily, he had all the women jealous because Lillian was like, there was thinking about it. You know all the women like, that should be me. That's that, that's the second half of the, of the round two, and they will be set for the Sweet 16. But, I can't get out of here because we do have a big four pay-per-view coming up next weekend, fellas. The biggest party of the summer, right? Mm-hmm. And I that mean, it's summer. Not really... <sighs> now, still no fans will be in attendance. Yeah. But with TakeOver and SummerSlam, I see some interesting things. Because check this out, Dre. Pat McAfee will be in the WWE ring on on that Saturday against Adam Cole. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Well, we also got Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee for the NSC Championship. Now, did any one of y'all catch Wednesday's NSC show? No, nah, I didn't catch it. No, nah, I got my brother. No. You might want to, you might, if you don't have to watch the whole thing, but catch the first part of that damn show. Because it, some things happen in the beginning part between Cross and Keith Lee. All of us are in here like, what the hell just happened? I'll check it out. So you might want to check that out. We still got that North American Championship that happened. Ladder match. I think it's a ladder match. That should be fun to watch. Let's get to the real ones. Let's get to SummerSlam. Somebody, I believe it was Alex Bottle, Dominic against Seth Rollins. I don't even know how this is gonna go. I, I, I mean, if if Dominic wins, I don't. I mean, I don't know what what to make of it. I mean, what's gonna come to mind is I'm, if he does win, I'll probably go on Twitter and say. I remember when he was just a little boy in that in that rivalry between Ray and the late great Eddie Guerrero about you know biological daddy. Like I just remember the whole. I'll, I'll just say, and if you, in case you forgot, it's the whole thing is I'm your puppy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Dre. Do you yo you, you can't. <sighs> usually, when a WWE star may stay first debut match, they usually win it. But you have got the Monday Night Messiah over here. You gonna have him lose to uh, Ricky? I don't think pay per view. I think I, I think Dominic gonna show out though. I'll tell you that much. If he does win, I wouldn't be surprised if his dad helps him. That's a possibility. It's well, kind of me. Listen, he, he's following in his dad's footsteps. So to come out the gate, if you go up against Seth. 
that right there should tell you that they they see something in you. If your first match is against one of the top performers in the company, you definitely got to show out. No matter where you at on that card, like where, no matter what time slot you on that card, you're going to have to show out. So it's a lot of pressure on him, and hopefully he pulls it off. Well, I agree, but knowing we, we all know Seth Rollins, how, you know, he's actually, you know, aside, you know, off character, he's a, he's a hard worker. He, he cares about, he wants others to succeed too. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if he told, if he says, no, I'm, He's gonna. I want. He's. We're gonna have him win. We need to get Dominic over, guys. I mean, it doesn't. To get him over, it doesn't really have to be a win. I mean, if Dominic has a. If he. If it's a losing effort, like Dominic really did well. I mean, that's something. But I would not be surprised if if Seth, you know, went out and told Vince, "Nope, I'm not gonna win this match. We're gonna have. Dom, we're gonna. We, we need to put Dominic over. We gotta build him. I mean, now's the time. We're not wasting this guy. We're not gonna waste this guy." Now I got to now uh Sasha Banks one of the lovely women that my man Dre loves and I do too. Actually I take that back. I'm not loving this moment. I love, I love I love me the boss. I'm getting I'm getting tired of her and Bailey. And why the <laughs> hell do they have all the goddamn gold? Oh, you know honestly I'm still asking myself why the hell they turned Bailey heel. Oh no, no, I disagree. I, I I love her heel run. I love it. I love her heel run. I mean, well, it, it, it makes it, sense because they did Becky, nothing with her when she was faced. So without Becky, it was, it, Ronda, it, it, and it Charlotte, it, it, it was needed. Somebody had to, some one of the two had to turn heel. So Bailey never went heel yet, so it was the like obvious choice. But Banks and Oscar. Listen, don't do my girl dirty. She just got the belt. Don't I have a drop of shit already? She got I mean, a history of doing that. Don't, 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 don't do it this time. She won't put the belt to begin with anyway. Huh? She won't put that belt to begin with anyway. It must have been Oscar belt. Hey, when they, hey, when they went at it on Raw the second time, she won. So just keep, just keep the belt on her. Let her have a nice little run. Don't take it from her yet. Come on. I need Banks to take the belt from Bailey. That's what I need. That's you know I want that too. Yes, that's exactly what I want because I love Oscar. I love Oscar. Oscar deserves better. She's very well skilled in the ring. Her character is flamboyant. It's unique, and I am still uh, very upset. That they had her drop the belt to Charlotte 12 days before WrestleMania that was going to have the women's main event. If they had made it a fatal four-way match with Asuka in it, I guarantee you that would have been a huge success. I mean, imagine those wrestling fans in Japan. Like, they would have gone insane to have... I mean, but for her, for them to ruin her by having her drop the belt to Charlotte, who was going to lose it anyway, makes no sense. Not only from a fan perspective, but in business-wise to me, it would not make sense. But I do have to agree with Dre on, on, on one thing. I love Sasha Banks, and you know her previous four title runs. How she would lose it like on her first defense and have a very short reign. I mean, don't do that again, because Sasha Banks also deserves better. She's very good in the ring, very well skilled, and her mic skills are amazing. Then stop, and, then stop teasing them to putting each other in in situations they don't want to be in. I'm looking at it like y'all is teasing us, but y'all won't give it to us. It's been going on for months now. I mean, as far as Sasha Banks goes, I don't even know what they're gonna do. I just hope for the, I just hope for the best for her personally. But guess what, though? If she does keep the title, Dre, if she does, I'm gonna tell you who, who she gonna drop it to. Cause she is coming, and I and I'm waiting on it. Nope, not Shayna. Nikki Cross. Nope, not Nikki. Not Lacey Evans, that's for sure. <laughs> even even though I love Lacey Evans. Y'all put y'all Dre Dre finna back me up on this. Y'all put my girl, Naomi, in a field with Lacey Evans over a goddamn karaoke contest. I wouldn't be okay. I, 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 I wouldn't be mad if Naomi dropped Why did y'all put Naomi in a feud over a karaoke contest? Okay, well, you know what, Darnell, that's that's a good question. But here's also another good question. Why did they turn Lacey Evans 
into a face if they were only going to have her job out and lose repeatedly to Sasha Banks and Bayley. I mean, immediately when she was called, when she was brought up from NXT, they immediately put her in that in that feud with Becky Lynch, and she lost like twice. Okay, and, we all seen that coming. Uh, yes. So what I'm saying is they already ruined Lacey Evans, but now. I mean, she's probably already. I mean, some might say she's not buried yet. I hope not, because you know she's you know very very good wrestler. And, you know her mic skills and her accent and her character is is all cool. But it's like they ruined her, but they're just making it worse. I mean, like, I don't even know what's going on with Lacey. But yeah, I mean that feud with Naomi, it's not making any sense now, is it? But my girl, Bianca Belair, is coming. Oh, EST, I wouldn't mind that at all. She is coming. Good. Come. 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 Best believe I, I am waiting for this moment. She should have been an NXT Women's Champion, but they ain't do it. So y'all better do it on the main roster. Yo, I got an emergency call. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to jump right back. I'm going to jump back right back in after the call. All right. Anything else happening at SummerSlam? So, SummerSlam weekend that I need to go over? There is. But I don't I don't know who's gonna be better opponent because they doing a because of this three brand by the war that's supposed to happen on SmackDown. Well, there's the match Braun Strowman versus the Fiend Bray Wyatt. That is. Uh, oh my gosh, I do not want to get into that. Well, because the problem is, um, isn't it rumored that Alexa Bliss is gonna be put as you know officially the whole Sister Abigail thingy? I mean. I, I thought this. I thought this whole storyline was like was gone. Like it wasn't even a thing to be talked about any, anymore. You know, I read I read news on that and it just broke me down. But you know, if they do make Alexa Bliss Sister Abigail Darnell, does, does that poise us for a feud between Nikki Cross and uh, and you know, obviously Alexa Bliss? Or do they do that in the story? They, do they get Nikki Cross in, involved in the storyline? The funny thing was, it was first thought about that Nikki Cross was going to be Sister Abigail. Really? I mean, yeah, I, you, because you, you, you mean, you see how you mean Sierra Lowe? You... No, you see how Nikki Cross' character is. It, it it fit right into how Bray Wyatt. That's true, yeah. It's just, if if she were to have the character, she would have to shield, she'd probably have to shield her Scottish accent. I mean, her Scottish accent is very thick and it's very, you know, I like it. So if she were to be Sister Abigail, I would not be surprised if Vince would require her. Like he says, you can't ha- you can't speak in your Scottish accent anymore. So Dre, and I don't and I, and I don't know how difficult that would be for her. So Dre, but, one, it, one of the rumors that's going around for WWE broke my heart. You know why? Because it's rumored that we know who Sister Abigail is going to be. Well, don't 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 don't, don't give it away. I don't. I I want I want to. Wanna... I want to find out on my own. I want to find out on my own. Don't, don't, don't give no spoilers. Let me find out, you know, the old-fashioned way. Uh, if this happens, and if it happened on SummerSlam, I'm gonna be so heartbroken. I'll be, I'll, I'll be cool with that. Y'all can catch Sportsboy Bay, Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio. All right, my brother, we'll holler at you. Ah, right, yo, y'all be easy out there, yo. Y'all be easy. This is the Bear of Texas. You guys can catch my two segments. I've got Into the Net FC, the Soccer Talk segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. I'm going to be starting my Cowboys Talk segment next month. And let me remind you that Darnell, the playmaker, will be my first guest on the show as my Cowboys take on his Rams. It's going to be great to have Darnell on the show to debut it. Y'all stay easy. We're all in this together, folks. It'll all be over soon. Let's all stay strong. And speaking of the Rams, making a debut episode on this past Thursday was Ramley Talk. Did drop my first episode talking about my LA Rams. And by the way, I did make a prediction on that damn game with them damn Cowboys. So go check that out and look for my prediction on that one. Well, is it a prediction or is it a spoiler, Darnell? I gotta say prediction because we don't know what's going on. <laughs> and it, anything sports wise, it ain't no spoilers. This is a, this is a prediction because we don't know what the hell going on. And Ramley talk just like 
the Into the Net FC and Cowboys Talk of the Bear of Texas podcast. They're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, YouTube, and many more platforms. And by the way, y'all be prepared because on Monday, coming in, the playoff episode of Hoops Talk. Because the playoffs are set, and I'm ready to, I'm ready to talk some more hoops, man. It's playoff time. Let's go. I'll watch y'all later. Everybody stay strong. Uh, the Bear Texas closing out from deep in the heart of Texas. God bless y'all. My man Dre Day out in Brooklyn. Peace and love, my guys. Peace and love. Be safe. And the playmaker from Jacksonville, Florida, signing off. We'll catch y'all for the next time we get to talk about the Sweet 16. Gonna be sweet. Take care, everybody. Do some love.